Hi, my name is Oak, and this is Spilling the Tea with iHeartRadio Broadway. iHeartRadio Broadway, driven by Mercedes-Benz. My ultimate favorite Broadway show would have to be Ragtime by Aaron's and Flaherty. I feel like, fortunately or unfortunately, that is a show that will always be relevant in dealing with just issues that kind of have been affecting America since its inception, race and immigrants. And it does a really great job of uh, showcasing um, the different perspectives from the three groups. And um, the music is remarkable. Cole House's journey, every main character has a remarkable journey. Um, it's very, very beautiful. And I think it's truly timeless. And just like the choral arrangements and everything, just listening to it is a joy and a dream. But that is hands down my favorite. The first Broadway show I ever saw, I think, was Sly Fox. It was a straight play. I can't remember who was in it. I can't remember too much about it. But I remember looking at the playbill and being like, OK, this is a thing. Dying to see, that's intense. I'm not trying to die to do anything, because life is fantastic. But shows that I would really like to see, um, there are actually a couple. One, appropriate, I don't know if it's still on, by Brandon Jacob Jenkins. That's a homie from way back. Um, the Notebook by Ingrid Michaelson, another homie who I love dearly. And uh, there was one more. And um, Sunset Boulevard, of course. That as well with Jamie Lloyd. Uh, just three, three dear friends, and I love to support their work, and I love their work. So those are the three shows that I'm excited about. The best piece of advice that someone gave me was actually from Marcy Phillips, and it was learn your damn lines. Um, that is the f number one advice that you need. The moment you learn your lines and you have them down, you can play, you can play with subtext, you can actually activate things. No one wants to watch you try to remember your lines. It's not exciting. Um, but that is the best piece of advice I was ever given. My favorite moment in Jelly's Last Jam actually is the end, the very final moment of the show. That's all I'm going to say. It's very beautiful. And, it, it, and remember when I f watched the run through finally, it, it hit me. It all hit me in such a magnificent way. Um, and it really uh, gave weight to the whole piece. So go see it to see the last moment. The best part about doing a New York City Center production is the group of people that come together to do the mad thing that we do. Um, doing a show like this with the time constraints requires a certain kind of animal. And uh, people who answer the call are kind of nuts and wildly talented and just down for whatever. So um, this is my first one. So from this experience, that's been the best thing is the group of folks that I've worked with and that people I may not have worked with um, in any other circumstance. Also, I just want to give a general shout out to the creative team and the cast and crew of Jelly's Last Jam. This is 10 days, y'all. So those tap dancers and those dancers you see, it's 10 days. We put all of this together. Everyone was focused. We came together. We didn't stop. We were changing things up until the first performance. But in a truncated time, just remember, like, that was done in no time. And it, it, it's testament to the focus and drive of everybody in that room. So kudos to them. They've made me better. And... Um, Hopefully, you all walk away as inspired as I do every night. <laughs> Actually, my favorite Hamilton memory is, is a bit topical now because it's an election year. It was after that guy got elected, after good old Obama, the one we love Obama, after the other dude got elected, um, we really came together and I never saw a group of artists put everything they were feeling in a performance before in my life. That was our lifeline, doing that show after um, after he got elected. It was what held us together. It's how we processed what we were going through. It was amazing to look out at the audience and see a lot of people who were with us, like we can't believe what's happening. But um, really the spirit and the words of perseverance fighting on in spite of ridiculous odds, it never rang true. Um, so that, that's a proud moment I have with my cast um, and with that show. My favorite fan encounter was actually a really, really small moment with um, a young Nigerian girl came up to me and she said she was so moved because she hadn't seen a Nigerian on stage before in that way. And it never really hit me. My name is so distinct and there's no hiding that, but she was so truly moved and she truly was flabbergasted because I expected, because I, I was with Cephas at the time, I thought she would go up to like one of the other women and say like, you know, I'm so empowered by you. But I, I didn't realize that, and many other Nigerians since then have said, you know, they're like, it's so cool to see our name in something so big, involved with something so big. Um, so that was a really wonderful fan moment to realize, you know, I, I inspire my people in a way. 
that I, I didn't even realize or wasn't even thinking about. I do not have one currently, but if I were to think back to my youth, which I'm still in, I would say it was between ragtime, of course, and the last five years. Oh, well, right now, uh, an artist I love is Sun L. He's a South African uh, DJ, and uh, he has an album called From Africa to the World, and I have been listening to that album on repeat. It's remarkable, it's amazing, and it's beautiful. It gets you moving, um, and it's just good old South African music holding it down for the continent. So, Sun L, S-U-N-E-L, look him up. iHeartRadio Broadway, driven by Mercedes-Benz.